If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already. And please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Nebraska Lands, USA for Farm Sim 22. But before that, this video is brought to you by Alan McCone and Mighty Mouse 05. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Nebraska Lands USA 22 map can be found over at nexusmods.com. And I do have a link to this page down in the description below. Since this map is one hosted over at nexusmods.com and two is a 16X map, which means it is 16 times larger than a standard map, it is gonna be a PC only map. Now over here at Nexus Mods, you will need to be a member and logged in in order to download this map. I do know that when you sign up, if you're already not a member of Nexus Mods, it can be a little confusing and they make it kind of difficult to sign up for free, but you can create a free account. You do not have to pay any money to Nexus Mods in order to create an account. You just need to be very, very careful when you sign up and look closely on the sign up page and there is gonna be a way basically to say, no, I really don't wanna give you any money. Let me have an account anyway. And that's the option you're gonna to wanna to pick. Now, once you're here and logged in, well, we're gonna to go to files and then we are going to download the file and we're gonna pick slow download. Again, we are not paying anything to download any map or mod for Farming Simulator 22. We are gonna go with slow download and it will work, okay? It's not gonna be that slow. It's gonna take maybe, maybe 20, 30 minutes at most. This isn't, this isn't rapid gator, which is anything but rapid. Now, this map is huge. This download is 3.8 gigabytes in size. So this is gonna be a little bit of a chunky one. And we're gonna talk a little bit about basically how we're gonna be able to use this map or what servers this map is gonna fit on here in a little bit. After you've downloaded the map from Nexus Mods, you're gonna have a file that looks similar to this in your downloads folder. What you're gonna do is to extract these files. Easiest way to do that is gonna to be to right click and then go to extract all, and then just go ahead and extract to the folder where your zip file is currently located. And then it is going to open another folder window once that extraction is complete. Now that may take a little bit of time, but once the extraction is done, you're gonna find that the zip file has two files within it. We have Nebraska Lands USA 22. That is the map itself. And then we have the Nebraska Lands mod pack. You're gonna to need to put both of these into your mod folder. If you put just the map, it will not start because it is flagged that the NL mod pack is going to be a required mod. CCS101 is the map author of this map, and he is known to have very long and detailed descriptions. For that reason, we are not going to read the entirety of this description, but I do want to hit a few various highlights. One, this map does have collectibles, and there is some information here in the description with respect to what to expect when trying to collect some of those collectibles. There's also some information here with respect to how you can start out on the farms or on the map in the various game modes. So in new farm mode, you will start with some equipment gifted to you by the local case dealership, some money and good wishes from the community. On harder modes, the equipment will not be provided from the dealership, so work wisely. And since this is a big map, these are big fields that come at big prices. New vehicles will have Nebraska license plates. You can get free water at one of the small ponds on the map. Many of these feature frogs in the spring and early summer. There's also no magic seed or fertilizer buy points on the farms. You must buy these at the local sell points in the various locations. There are many locations where you can purchase things like seed and fertilizer. Tri-County Fertilized Sales, located in town, will sell you bulk fertilizer. Central Valley Ag, located down by the railroad tracks, will also sell you liquid fertilizer and herbicide. There's also going to be an area where you can buy anhydrous for your propane needs. There is 
Amerigas, which is down also by the train tracks, but on the other side of the map, just south of the Case IH dealer. If you need any bulk pig food, well, Green Plains Biofuels next to Amerigas can take care of that for you as well. If for some reason you need to buy manure or slurry, the animal dealer will happily sell you whatever they have because, well, they have a ton of it. There are two filling stations, one in town and one south near Interstate 80 along the southern map edge in the truck stop. And I have to say, it's a fairly nice truck stop, if I do say so myself. There are many points on this map to sell your produce or production outputs. Central Valley Ag, Great Plains Biofuels, and flour and oil mills will take certain grains that you have to sell. Make West Ag Crop Sales will also accept your root crops. Log Sell Point by the tracks will also take your cut logs. Nebraska Produce will accept your vegetables and fresh production items. And Farmer's Compost will accept your compost. You can buy the compost portion to engage in compost bagging, a custom production process, and sell the bags. Midwest Shipping will accept a variety of production items, including many from the new DLC. Wholesale Furniture Outlet will accept most of the production items as well, rounding out all the sell points on the map. Many of the areas in town do have open and close hours. For example, the equipment dealer, rain sell points, the root crop sell point, and other sell points will open at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. and close at 6 p.m. or 8 p.m. daily. There are additional custom productions on this map that include a pre-compost grinder and then two custom bunkers in order to make compost. We're going to be talking about those later on in the video. This map is set up for precision farming with a custom soil map. And as I mentioned, this map does have anhydrous and propane added to it. If you are going to use anhydrous and precision farming, I highly recommend you download the anhydrous add-on that is going to be available over at the Giants Mod Hub. I will have a link to that down in the description below. Also, if you don't know or have access to other anhydrous or propane mods, I'll have links to various anhydrous and propane mods also in the description below. Now, in addition to the Nebraska Lands Mod Pack, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. There are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, I will tell you, if you load this map up in Farm Manager or start from scratch, the description kind of already said that you won't have any starting machinery. All of the farms are going to be pre-placed exactly how you're going to see them here in New Farmer Mode. In addition, if you happen to load this map up on a system with low-end graphics, I will tell you I was rather surprised at the performance I got on the system I used to do this test, which has integrated AMD graphics. I was getting anywhere between 40 FPS to 60 FPS, depending on where I was on the map, with the lowest frame rates being down by the Case IH dealer because there's a whole lot of custom vehicles down there that and custom models of farm machinery some of which are just deco, others are things that you can actually use. Now this map is big and it is gonna take quite a long time to load in, in single player or in multiplayer. And in addition to the fact that since this map is so big, you're gonna be somewhat limited by the servers that you can load this map with because the map itself is like 2.4 gigabytes in size the mod pack is another 1.4 gigs. So collectively, we're looking at 3.8 gigs between the map and the associated mod pack. On a previous dedicated server company that I used to use, you get a total of four gigs and that was it. And you also only could upload mods via the website uploader that comes with the dedicated server. The map is too big for that website uploader. So if you are looking to put this map on a multiplayer server, you will need to find a multiplayer server like G Portal, where you can one, purchase 25 gigs of mod space. So you have plenty of mod space for the map, the mod pack and any other mods that you wish to run. And two, you have a way of uploading the map and the mod to the server without using the web uploader with respect to G Portal. They give you information on how to use 
FTP file transfer protocol in order to do that. And you can use an application like FileZilla in order to upload those files, just like we did when we did our multiplayer live stream testing on this map, we used gportal servers. Now, when you load into Nebraska lands for the very first time, you will start here in the village of Wacoville, which is approximately right smack dab in the middle of this map. And you're here at the visitor center because, well, we are a visitor. We are not a resident of Wacoville. We're here to work as a contractor. Now, just like the visitor center, which is currently closed, we're not gonna be able to go into the visitor center until around 9 a.m. Lots of buildings, lots of businesses and other establishments here in town. Well, they're also gonna be closed until certain times of the day. So do take note that if they have open and close hours, then they likely will have signs posted as to when those hours are. But in general, we can expect for things to open up maybe around 9 a.m. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward to 9 a.m. That way we can see that once we do hit that magical time frame, we will then be able to come into the visitor center. Now I would encourage you to not just check out the visitor center or the you know, little gazebo, whatever you wanna call this, down here by the railroad tracks but just check out other things around the map because there's a whole lot of kind of little Easter eggs scattered around the map and it's gonna be definitely worth your time to visit. Now, speaking of the map, let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. This is, as I've already mentioned, a 16X map and as such, well, everything here is much, much larger than it would appear. So a 16x map is basically four maps wide and four maps tall, which means that once we fill in the grid, we have a total of 16 standard maps within its borders. The smallest field is going to be field 44 at 1.16 hectares in size. Meanwhile, the largest field is going to be field 17 at farmland 22 at 652 hectares in size or 1626 acres so quite the disparity from small to large fields now, as far as crops go we have all the standard crops with the exception of sugarcane we do not have sugarcane on this map because sugarcane is not a crop that is grown in nebraska but a crop that is grown in nebraska is alfalfa and that has been added to this map as an additional crop if you happen to have the premium expansion installed, well, you will have access to your red beets, carrots, and parsnips. And as, well, the game engine so lovely likes to do, you're probably gonna find in your game save that one or more of these root crops are gonna be pre-planted in some of the largest fields on the map. Thank you, giants. Now let's zoom in here because we are in new farmer mode. And I am going to be talking a little bit slower during this section of the video because there is just absolutely so much going on and I want to make sure that I'm as clear as possible. We do not own any land at the start in any game mode. In new farmer mode, we will have access to the contractor yard, which is located right here in town. It does have a sleep trigger and there are various machinery and machines that are pre-placed here for us to make use of as we start our career as a contract farmer. Now, in addition, there are other viable things here in town. There are four building plots in town. They are farmland ID 1, 2, 3, and 4, with 4 being the largest and just south of the contractor yard. Farmland 4, or yeah, farmland ID 4, that is going to be a lot that it's going to require you to clear off the area. There's some debris. There's an old tree. There's a half-built farmhouse. Clear that away, and then you're going to be able to put down whatever you want. There is a warehouse north of the contractor yard at Farmland ID 63 for $298,000. Once you buy that, you're going to be able to enter the warehouse. And the warehouse has roll-up doors. 
You're going to be able to back a truck up to the dock, load it up or empty it with a forklift, for example, and put things up on shelves. So it is a fully functional warehouse. In addition to the buildable yards and the warehouse, there are also farmhouses and rental properties here in town. So as far as rental properties go, we have three at Rental Property Farmland 34, 60, and 61. These are basically houses that if we own, then there will be people that will live in those and will provide us a little bit of residual income month after month simply because they live there. There are also four viable farmhouses on this map here in town alone. We have farmhouse at 62, 58, 59, and 95. So we could choose to buy any of those houses and use those as our farmhouse. Right across the street from the farmhouse at Farmland ID 95, we have a machine shed or a workshop at Farmland ID 64. And in that workshop, we're going to find some additional vehicles and machines that we are going to be able to make use of if we own the building. Now, if we come back here into our general overview screen, you're going to see that we do have scattered around implements, tools, machinery, and vehicles, all that we're going to be able to make use of scattered all over this map. Now, there is a particular caveat to this machinery, and that is that we do not own it but we are able to make use of it, which is pretty darn cool. But as a side effect, what that also means is we are not going to be able to sell the machinery, nor are we going to be able to customize the machinery that is available for us to make use of. And you may think, well, that's fine. I don't really need to customize it. You're going to want to customize it if, for example, you're going to be making use of a tractor and you want to make use of something like guidance steering. Well, you're not going to be able to on this machinery because you do not own it, but you can still use it with, let's say, a hired helper and then use something of your own with your guidance steering. So just note. Well, we'll just let that train pass. Thank you. Just note that, again, all of this machinery is going to be available for use. And when we get over here to the dealer, it's going to be intermixed with a whole bunch of deco machinery as well. Now that we've talked kind of about what's going on here in town, let's scatter out a little bit from town. Just south of Field 25, we have five greenhouses. These greenhouses are usable. We will need to purchase them. But once we buy them, we won't be able to make use of them. They are south of Field 25, as I said. Over here to the west of the map, by our vehicle shop, we have properties Farmland ID 111 and 112. Farmland ID 112 is a rental property. Meanwhile, Farmland ID 111 is an empty lot. And we can basically put our farmhouse down here or any small building that we might wish. To the north of that is going to be our first farm. And this farm is notable for two reasons. One, it is not pre-built, so it is ready for you to build out however you like. And two, it's the closest one to the shop. And on a 16X map, I can tell you one thing, location, location, location. You do not want to be, have to drive all the way across the map simply to go to and from the shop. So this is going to be very, very valuable. Jeez. And very, very close at $9,000, a steal of a deal. Now, another farm that we have here is going to be an arable farm north of town. Farmland ID 13, $734,000. And it is going to be an arable farm, like I mentioned. And the farmhouse is going to be right next to it at Farmland ID 105. Something that we're going to find as a trend on this map is that the farm proper and the farmhouse have been separated typically at most farm areas into two distinct viable properties. To the north and east of that farm, we have what I'm calling the old abandoned farm. 
This farm is made up of several old buildings, lots of old trees, debris, trash, old machinery just kind of scattered around. The sheds, the silos, they are usable here on this farm, but well, it is a bit of a trash heap. So you may want to clear the area and then build out whatever you want. Now, what's also notable is farmland ID 103 right next to that farm. Well, it is also abandoned. It is 379 acres of wilderness, basically. There is an old crop in here. I believe this is corn that has been planted here, but it has been fallow for so long. There is no field left anymore. If you want to make use of this, you're going to have to plow it up and start over from scratch. To the East of that, we have our compost master at Farmland ID 100. The compost master is not for making compost, as one might think, but it is going to be for making pre compost, which is the precursor to compost. Hmm, kind of an interesting name. At any rate, we're going to make pre compost here, and then we are going to take that down here to Farmland ID 76, which is beside the BGA where we're gonna be able to put the pre-compost into a bunker. We're going to compact it just like it's silage, put a blanket on it, let it cook overnight or for a month or so. And we're gonna have nice black gold compost that we can either sell, bag, or put on our fields. Farmland ID 51 is gonna be a chicken farm and the associated farmhouse is gonna be farmhouse 75. As I mentioned, we have our BGA at Farmland ID 47, and then the compost bunkers at Farmland ID 76. We have an old cow farm at Farmland ID 79 and 80, and then its associated farmhouse is gonna be at Farmland ID 83. We have a small arable farm at Farmland ID 72, with its farmhouse at Farmland 71. We have a buildable lot here, kind of a commercial yard at Farmland ID 94. I bought for $48,000. We have a large cow farm at Farmland ID 85, 86, and 87 with its corresponding farmhouse at Farmland ID 91. We have a pig farm located at Farmland ID 55. And then its farmhouse is conveniently located here at Farmland ID 93. We also have a small cow farm located here at Farmland ID 93. And its farmhouse is located here on the property. And those are the eight farmhouses that are available here. Now, just north of the pig farm, we also have a few cell points and we have a few buildable lots at Farmland ID 35 and 106 respectively. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is gonna show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included. And then lastly, how much is that farmland gonna cost us? At any point in time, you can pause this video and see the various sizes of those farmlands. And let's take a look now at our field calculator screen. And this is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. See, lots of these fields are anywhere between 20 to 50 hectares in size, but we do have a few much, much larger. We have the one that we already saw, 694 hectares. Here we have 494, 345. 459, just to give you a little sense of what's going on here. Now this map does have a custom soil map. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. The majority of the map is loam. There are some strips of sandy loam scattered around and then very narrow bands of silty clay, mostly through town and along the railroad tracks, as well as following some of the waterways and some other low lying areas around. This map is making use of a custom growth calendar, and we can see that listed here. 
In addition, let's go ahead and take a look down through our prices screen. You will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are included with this map. In addition, we do have the ability to sell our eggs below milk and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we continue down through all of the base game production items, we once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items. In addition, we do have the ability to buy bulk lime as well as solid fertilizer. We also have a way of getting rid of our stones at our debris crusher. And in addition to our base game items, we have alfalfa windrow, alfalfa hay windrow. We have a corn and soybean dryer, so we can sell dried corn and soybeans. As I mentioned, we do have propane and anhydrous that are added items to this map. We have the ability to bag our compost, or we could sell our loose compost. If we do happen to have a farm production pack, we do have the ability to sell our washed vegetables, as well as our platinum expansion. We do have the ability to sell all of our platinum expansion production items as well. As one would expect, we also have the ability to sell our premium expansion productions. If we are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability of getting rid of our separated manure, as we do also have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets. We also have a milk bottler available on this map and our premium expansion crops. With respect to the starting machinery, well, the machinery that we do own, and therefore we will be able to customize and sell it, we've got a fairly modest list of contractor machinery. We do not own any animals at the start. We do have contracts available. Obviously, that's going to be the key way that we're going to be making a lot of our money here on this map. We do not have any production chains at the start. And this map does have 27 collectibles. Now, we'll tell you that these collectibles are scattered all around the map. Most of them are small toy tractors or implements, but there are a few large golden nuggets. And let's just say one of these golden nuggets, well, it's only going to be available after dark. Happy hunting. Now let's kind of get away from town here, town center, where we have our railroad tracks. And let's make our way up this way to our contractor yard. And here we are at our contractor yard. So let's go ahead and take a look at that contracting equipment. We start out owning the Case Steiger 470 and the Case IH Magnum 340 CVX Drive Large Tractors. We also have the Case Axle Flow 9250 Harvester. We have the Elmer's Hallmaster Auger Wagon. We also have then the 42 foot draper grain header and the 12 row corn header for our harvester. We've got the case speed tiller disc caro. We have the LB 436 HD square round by or square baler. We have a silage fork and we have a 1500 kilogram front weight. And that's our starting machinery. Now, with respect to the buildings here at the contractor yard, as well as pretty much any shed here on the map. You're gonna be able to have to find the person door. And once you find the person door, you're gonna be able to open the shed doors. You try to open these shed doors from outside. Nope, it's not gonna work. So in most buildings, find the person door and then you're gonna be able to make use of and enter the building. In some cases, well, you're going to find that the activation trigger is going to be not at the door, but on the wall. And there you go. Then, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a farmhouse here at our contractor yard with our sleep trigger upstairs. Now, 
Now I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of buying all of those particular farmlands that we talked about a little bit earlier on in the video. And as such, well, I kind of want to show them to you here. So in town, let's just go north of our contractor yard. And this is going to be the warehouse. We also have a cell point here. But again, just like you might expect with the sheds, we're going to have to go to the person door. And then once we are inside our warehouse, well, we're going to have access to open all of these doors. And you see we have racks and doors all over the place. Now, right across the street from this warehouse, we have this kind of old lock shed. And inside the block shed, if you want to make use of it, we've got a really old pickup truck. Coming down Main Street, we're going to find one of our farmhouses. This house right here. Now, lots of areas on this map are going to have these signs. And it basically represents buyable land. So it's going to be on every farmland that you buy. If it's going to be with a farm or a building or just a field. And once you buy the land, you come up here, you can left click and make the sign go away. Or you can just left click and make the sign come back. So it's kind of a little bit of role play. Like, oh, I went and bought the house. Let me take the sign away. And then maybe one day you want to go and sell the house again. You can put the sign back. Kind of a cool little fun feature. All of the farmhouses on this map are in trouble. So you will be able to go into each and every farmhouse. And there's going to be sleep triggers and wardrobe triggers inside we are not going to go inside of H in every farmhouse, but I just want to tell you here that they are all going to be able to be entered, and as such, they're all going to have sleep triggers. Another kind of token item in CCS 101 maps is the Dollar General. So there's going to be a Dollar General on each and every one of its maps, so there we have that here. We come down this street we're gonna know rental properties because of the rental property sign on top of the remax sign or a farmhouse is simply going to be the remax sign so that's going to how you know what the difference is between a rental property or not another farmhouse and then if we come down a block and over here we have another rental property with a white Trans Am not quite the right truck color but you know he's a fan This is the property that is south of the contract yard, commercial area. So you see we've got kind of an old house or building there. We've got some debris, an old tree. All of this stuff can be cleared away and sold. Then you have a pretty nice large area for which to expand your operations. We make our way south of the railroad tracks. To the right, we have another farmhouse. And then across the street, well, we've got that machine shed. And as I mentioned inside of here, well, depending on if you have the Kubota DLC and depending on if you had it activated when you loaded this map up, well, you'll have either this Kubota tractor or not. You'll have this Vermeer self-propelled round baler or not. And that's going to hold true with respect to other areas on this map. Depending on if you own DLCs or if you had them active when you initially loaded the map, you may or may not get some free DLC machinery as available for use. This shed has a cool little feature where we can 
change the color of the uh, steel. And we have a liftable. Lift here. If you want to do a little bit of role play. Now with that, let's jump over here to our shop. And we're going to kind of go around the map in the same order that we talked about the farms in and do the farm tours of all the various farms. Here at the farm shop. We have a buyable property here. So we can buy, clear this up, and put a house down or whatever you want. And then right down the road from that, we have another rental property. And if you don't mind me running at four times speed up this road, it'll just give you a little hints or a sense of how far away this is, even though it is so close to the shop. This is going to be our first farmyard, but it is going to be completely void of all buildings. Let's see, you see these various real estate signs that we can again make go and come away. And all the trees, for the most part, are on the perimeter of this area. And you can put, come in here and put down the buildings. It looks like these buildings are already here, but trust me, they are not. This is exactly how it is intended. The way the map author described this is someone had to go at basically farming. They bought this land. They put down some buildings, um, but they didn't make a go of it. They failed. Debt collectors came in. They took all the buildings and everything that they could in order to collect their debts. And this is how you see it now. Now we were right here and we've now quickly moved here to our greenhouse area, just south again of field 25. We have a water tower for a water trigger. We have five large greenhouses. And then we have a shed here where we can make use of this shed in order to store our product or whatever machinery we may be using down here at this greenhouse area. Once you buy all of these greenhouses, you could, of course, sell these and then make use of this land however you really wanted to. Now you see off in the distance, the next field, or farm. And I've gone ahead and modified this so I'm moving at eight times speed. Just to give you a sense of how fast we're moving here. We'll get down here closer to the ground. So this is going to be an arable farm with a large silo complex. All of these farms are completely and totally customizable. We have our farmhouse there. This is going to be a NPC farm. It's kind of a little deco farm with some animated cows. And now we're going to make our way up here to what I'm calling the abandoned farm. Now I want to circle back just in the event that you've skipped over what I mentioned in the intro. This is a very big map, not just because it's 16x. It is physically a very big file size. And as such, it's not going to play friendly with lots of different multiplayer server providers. Here we have our abandoned farm. As you can see, it's kind of overgrown. We've got some old sheds. We've got some trash. We've got some debris. We've got some old machinery and vehicles here. We can use this exactly how it is here. That silo is perfectly functional with an auger. And this little mini house is perfectly functional as well. Or we could sell this area. We could cut these trees down 
and clear it out and have ourselves a nice area to build whatever we want. And then right here we have the abandoned cornfield. And this field has been fallow for so long, well, that it is no longer a field. It is just basically dirt, empty land. And if you want to do any farming in here, well, you're going to have to carve up and make your own field or fields. This alone is probably like half of a standard map. Let's make our way down to the chicken farm. And as we make our way over to the chicken farm, let me finish what I was saying there about this being a very large file sized map. And then the large mod pack means that you're going to have some difficulty in uploading this to just any multiplayer server. You're going to be fairly limited to multiplayer servers that are going to provide you with a direct way of uploading the files as opposed to using the web uploader that is a part of the farm sim dedicated server website. So what I mean with that is that the website has that uploader has a particular file size limit of around 1.7 gigs and anything larger than that, it's going to error out and you're not going to be able to upload. So you're going to have to use a host that is going to allow you to directly upload via an upload tool like WSFTP. Oh my gosh. I just showed my age there. Sorry. An FTP upload tool like FileZilla or some other way of uploading outside of the standard farm sim website. So here we have our chicken farm. We have our farmhouse. We have two chicken coops. We've got some large machine sheds. And for the sake of brevity, we're not gonna run down through where each and every part of the building is in this particular video. But we do have some silos here that we will need to use augers in order to fill. So during all of the live stream multiplayer testing, I use G portal servers. I am a G portal partner. And if you are interested in putting this up on a server and you don't already have one, I would appreciate if you can maybe use my G portal link. It is down in the description below. What's notable about G portal is that they provide you 25 gigs of mod space and give you a way to FTP upload your mods so you won't have any issue in uploading the mod pack or the map itself, and then have plenty of room left over for additional mods. So here we have a biomass heating plant, and we will have to put our items in the hopper. We will not be able to dump them offside, so you will need to either use a telehandler in order to put them up here, or some sort of belt. Right next door we have the BGA, with two silage bunkers. And then on the other side of those, these two are set up for pre-compost only. So these will not accept chaff. They will only accept pre-compost, cover them up, blanket, and then you're gonna get your compost. To the south east of the BGA, we're gonna come across our old cow farm. Sorry, this is an arable farm. The old cow farm is to the east. We're gonna make our way over here to the east they can kind of vaguely see off in the distance. Off in the distance scenery, more buildings. So this map has been set up with kind of the uh, invisible or the infinity um, map edges. So you just keep going and going and going. And the next thing you know, bam, you slam right into the map edge. So it's going to be right here at this fence. That's the map edge, right? So just be real careful with your driving. Now here we have the old cow farm. 
A nice little lane coming in here. We've got our farmhouse. And we have the old cow barn and pasture area. We do have five silage silos. This is one of those that are available. Sorry, four silos that are available for making silage. We've got a couple of grain bins there that are perfectly usable and some old sheds. While we make our way over to the truck stop, let's talk about some of our scoring metrics here. We're going to be doing the map at full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. We have 20 productions pre-placed on this map. We have a carpentry, compost bagging, spinnery, grain dryer, BGA, the biomass plant. We have four silage silos. We have a grain mill, an oil mill. We have the compost master. We also have a milk bottler. We have the dairy and we have the five greenhouses. So here we have a truck stop. And I would venture to say that most of these trucks and most of these trailers, and if there's something on the trailer, well, it might just be usable. All you gotta do is come up here, maybe pull up a truck to a trailer, or just jump in a truck and drive away. So if you're looking for maybe some free trailers, some free semis in order to get on with a large harvest, well, you might not need to look too much further than down here at the AKAL Energy Travel Center. Where the fuel on the sign is what you pay at the pump. So pretty cool. We also have a pickup truck available. And I believe there is a collectible right here. Just to give you a sense of what these collectibles might look like. Now, anyone familiar with the area? The interstate is right there. And I forget the name of the interstate at the moment. If we come up on over the map boundary. So it's I-80. Then we have North 93B. Taking us up into Wacoville. So north from the truck stop and then west, we're going to make our way over to a large cow farm. As far as the ability to sell all herbaceous crops, animal outputs, and production points, while this map does not have sugarcane that has been deliberately taken out of the map, and that is not going to cause us to deduct any points, we're going to be giving the map a full point there because we can sell everything that we can grow on this map. We can also sell everything that we can produce on this map. Can the farms be customized? Yes, indeed. We demonstrated this during the live multiplayer map testing. We were able to sell all of the buildings on all of the farms. So this is our larger and more industrialized cow farm with three silos. And the way these silos work is you're gonna to have to dump your product into this, not beside it, into this. So you may need to get a little bit ingenuitive as to how you dump product into there. I do know that there are small augers that you can buy and drive over top of and do that. Or you might wanna use some other form of method in order to get your product into there. But once that product is into there, then you're gonna be able to basically process that and take it out here. So chaff, grass, and alfalfa windrow in order to make silage. Now, all of these animal areas have been set up to accept large numbers of animals. Like I said, we're going to, just for the sake of map video brevity, not go into each and every one of those. To the northeast of the kind of large cow farm, we've got another old cow barn. It's located here in this clump of trees. 
that's pretty much how you're going to know where a farm is on this map. Look for a whole bunch of trees. And there's probably a farm close by. So we got the farmhouse there, a little garden, a little shed. We've got two silage bunkers there. The only two silage bunkers other than the two at the BGA. And we have an old cow barn silo. And there you go. Just to the north and east of that, we have our pig farm. We've got two pig buildings, one pig barn, and that kind of more specialized pig shed there. A couple other sheds. We've got some silos. And then aptly, the farmhouse is well removed from the pig farm. And it's over here. So let's keep on with this kind of aerial tour. And now we'll take a look at our various sell points and production points that we haven't already looked at. With respect to abilities where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Yes, overall, the vast majority of these buildings are using the new texturing technique. as well as the various ground textures. We'll take a look at those ground textures here in a moment. And then as far as build modes goes, there are a ton of mods in that mod pack. And yes, while I wish that we did have the mods that were on the mod hub linked to the mod hub, as opposed to being in the mod pack, uh, they are there and therefore build mode is going to be loaded out with everything. Everything that is pre-placed at all the farms, you can place down individually as well. So this is going to be where we can buy pig food. Okay. And then we have a grain cell point there. And then over here, we are going to have our propane buy point. So this is where we are going to buy propane. And we're going to need to use propane over at the grain dryer. Here we have our vehicle shop. We just jumped here real quick earlier, but you can see we've got a lot of machinery lined up here. Some of this machinery can be used. Some of it cannot. So it's up to you to figure out which of this machinery is perfectly usable and what of all this machinery is deco. But I can tell you the vast majority of the stuff here, uh, well, you're going to have to pick through it. But there is a good chunk of this stuff is completely and utterly, totally usable. So here we have our maintenance trigger. Down here at the dealer. And then inside the showroom, we're going to have our dealer trigger. Let's go ahead and buy the Mahindra just so we'll see where things spawn. They spawn here around the back of the dealer. The so fairly large area for your vehicles to spawn in at. Now let's quickly make our way back toward town. And then lastly, trigger in interactive areas being clearly marked. We're going to go with, yes, they are clearly marked. So that's going to give another map a full point there. And that's going to give this map a score of 5 out of 5 with respect to our scoring metric. So this is just a nice little deco area but we will be able to sell product here at the back end let me go ahead and show you where we are right now so we are at the metal recyclers just south from the greenhouses And over here, we're going to find our compost bagging facility. As well as a cell point. And here we have our compost bagging.
And then we have a cell point there. Or not, this is compost bag selling. Sorry. This is to sell compost bags. And this is the Midwest shippers cell point. And then we have two buildable sites right here with a little railroad spur and right here. As we come into town, we're going to hit a few things that we did skip over earlier. We have our spinnery. This is a base game spinnery, so we have an interactive icon. We have a dump point and pallet spawn point. This is going to be our compost bagger. So we have our dump point. We have our compost bag point there under the, the lean to. And then we have our interactive icon here at the side door. Here we have a farm equipment repair shop. So this is going to be a workshop trigger. And again, this is going to have open and close hours. Across the street from the railroad tracks. This is going to be where we can buy bulk fertilizer. Then on the other side of the railroad tracks, over here we're going to be able to buy bulk lime. And we have a grain cell point. We have our dairy production located right there. And a dairy cell point just north of that. Nice little tractor supply shed. South, we're going to find then our grain dryer. This is going to require propane. And we are going to be able to dry corn and soybeans. So we have a dump and fill point. We have our propane fill point there, our interactive icon around the back. Then we have two silos to store product. We have the ability to buy bulk seed. That is going to be located here. This is another commercial building area that we talked about earlier. We have our animal dealer where we can buy manure or slurry. They've got an overabundance of this. We have a semi. We have two usable trailers. We have our animal dealer with some animated cows. And then we have our animal dealer bale cell point. And you will need to put those right up against the gate. And then if we go this way, well, we're going to come over here to our BGA our compost area in our biomass heating plant area. So let's make our way back north to town. And once we get here to town, let's address this area right here. This is a massive poplar field. And well, if you want to do anything with this other than harvest poplar, you're going to have to plow it up. Here we have our anhydrous buy point. And again, if you are going to be using precision farming and you want to do anhydrous, you'll need to make sure you get the anhydrous add-on mod over at the Giants Mod Hub linked down in the description below. That way it's going to modify precision farming for you. And this is going to be where we can purchase fertilizer of the liquid variety herbicide of the liquid variety oh look someone just left a perfectly usable harvester down here 
And maybe even some perfectly usable sprayers. Hmm. Over here, we do have a log cell point. So we have a log cell point there. We have our interactive icon there. And then here we have our stone crusher. And of course, we do have the ability to make use of this shed as well. All the way over here, the far, far east, along the railroad tracks, we are going to find some more production. So over here we have our oil mill. Your interactive icon, our dump point, and our fill point. And then we have our flour mill. So we have our interactive icon, our pallet point, our dump point, right there. Then that's the map boundary. So make our way over here to the compost master, and we'll talk about the compost master and what it requires. So the compost master is located right here. It's gonna require diesel, as well as several other inputs. So you're gonna need straw, manure, diesel, water, and that is going to make compost, or pre-compost, sorry or straw, manure, diesel, water, or hay, manure, diesel, water. I think you got the gist here. Chaff, sugar beet, or potato. But the only thing that's consistent is manure, diesel, and water in order to get your pre-compost. Once you get your pre-compost, it's going to pile up here. You're going to fill it there, and then take it way over there to the bunkers in order to compact, make compost, and then you can make yourself some big time money. We have one more item to show off here. And that is going to be a large silo complex. Right here along the main road. We do have a few tractors that are placed over here that are also usable. Then we have a dump and fill point here for this large silo area. Then these silos are usable standalone. And then we have two tractors over here with disc arrows ready to go and this is going to be an AI NPC farm it's just deco there's nothing we can do with that so guys that is pretty much the map now like I said I wanted to go here and show you build mode landscaping we have our textures so we do have several added textures here we do have plants so we have meadow, we have a pair of big branches, lots of different ground textures, some custom foliage that we can put down. We can also paint plowed ground. So if you want to maybe make some fields the not old fashioned way, you can paint those down as well. And that is pretty much it. I'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to Nebraska Lands. Like I said in the intro, Nebraska Lands came out in Farm Sim 19 as a 4X map. And, well, I do want to tell you that as a 4X map, uh, it was a really nice map. Lots of people enjoyed it. And with the improvements that Giants has made with respect to the Farm Sim 22 engine, it now runs very, very well. 
scaled up four times larger as a 16x map. If you think you enjoy large maps, then give this one a go. If you're not sure if you're going to enjoy large maps, you might want to try it. I know for me, I am now over large maps. I will not be playing on this because I just don't have the time to put into large maps and large fields. But to each their own, I hope you enjoy it. And until next time.